complacencies of the pingoir and light, coffee oranges in a sunny chair, and the green freedom of a cockatoo upon a rug mingled to dissipate, the holy hush of instant sacrifice. She dreams a little, and she feels the dark enroachment of that old catastrophe, as a calm darkness among water lights. The pungent oranges and bright green wings seem things in some procession of the dead. Winding across water, without sound, the day is like wide water, without sound. Stilled for the passing of her dreaming feet, over to the seas, the silent Palestine, dominion of the blood and sepulchre. Is there no change of death in paradise? Does ripe fruit never fall? Or do the bows hang always heavy in that perfect sky, unchanging, yet so like our perishing earth, with rivers like our own that seek for seas, they never find the same receding shores that never touch with an articulate pang. Why set the pearer upon those river banks or spice the shores with odors of the plum? Alas, that they should wear our colors there, the silken weavings of our afternoons and the pick of the strings of our insipid lutes. Death is the mother of beauty, mystical, within whose burning bosom we devise our early earthly mothers waiting sleeplessly. She hears upon that water without sound a voice that cries, the tomb in Palestine is not the porch of the spirits lingering. It is the grave of Jesus where he lay. We live in an old chaos of the sun or an old dependency of day and night or island solitude, unsponsored, free of that wide water, inescapable. Deer walk upon our mountains and quail whistle about their spontaneous cries. Sweet berries ripen in the wilderness, and, in the isolation of the sky at evening, casual flocks of pigeons make ambiguous undulations as they sink downward to darkness on extended wings.